All right, good evening, fifth graders. Today's the last lesson in unit four, then we have a nice review, and then we have the test. But we're going to be going over some skills today that are going to help you on your unit four, kind of summing it all up with division, and we're going to be doing, working with some place value this evening, okay? So hang in there with me. Um, on tonight's um, flipped lesson, please press pause and find some scratch paper and try and work these problems out with me as you go and then check your answers because it's going to be a nice review for you. We're going to start off with a little bit of rounding here. You always need a little practice with rounding. Round to the nearest whole number. So we're rounding to the nearest whole number, kids. We're always looking at the number in the ones place. This number is a four. I'm looking to my right. Is that number greater than five? Five or greater? It is not. So my answer stays as 24. Right here, I'm going to take a look to the right. The answer is a five. So that means I'm going to round my eight up to a nine. So my answer is 309. Seven, I'm looking at this zero here. It is smaller than five. My answer is 77. Let's get a look at the next one. Round to the nearest tenth. I'm going to put a little space underneath my tenth. My tenth is always right next to my decimal to the right. Look to the right here, I have the number three. So my answer is going to stay 17.6. Right here, I've got a four. So my answer is going to stay 109.1. .1. I have an eight here, which is going to round my nine up. Since my nine goes up, I have to round all the way over to my three. So my answer is 240. Let's look at this bottom problem here. Round to the nearest hundredth. My hundredth place is right here, two spots away from my decimal. First problem here, I have 89.00, or 89.06. This number is a four, so I'm gonna have to keep it the same, 89.06. Right here, I've got a seven, so I'm gonna round it up. 23, 20, or two point, I apologize, 2.33. This nine is gonna round my one, a zero to a one, so I have 645 and 100. Let's keep going here. You are like organizing a trip to a museum for 110 students, teachers, and parents. If each bus can seat 25 people, how many buses do you need? Now keep in mind, we're dealing with people here, so we're gonna have to do something with the remainder, right? I have 110 students. I'm dividing it by 25 people that can sit on each bus. So each bus can only hold 25. 110 divided by 25. Markers here, once again, press pause i I'm going to be working this out so you can kind of see how you're doing with these problems. And if you're struggling, of course, you have to ask when you come into class tomorrow, and I will be right by your side to help you out, okay? 25 goes into 1 zero times. 0, subtract 1, bring down the 11. Can 25 go into 11? It can't. 25 times 0, subtract 1, 1, bring down the 0. How many times can 25 go into 110? Well, I know 25 times 4 equals 100. To go times 4, 25 times 4 is 100. Subtract, get a 10. I'm going to keep this as a remainder 10 because I'm not chopping anybody up for this field trip. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get a decimal of a person. So as we see here, we need four buses, but we can't forget these 10 people. So we are actually going to have five buses for this trip. I want to be on this bus with 10 people. That way I have more legroom. Okay. Let's keep on going. Now we have some place value. Let's take a look at this place value here. I don't have any decimals in the problem. My decimal is right here. I've got a comma right here. I've got a comma right here. Keep this in mind. The digit in the thousands place is a six. I've got a six right here in the thousands place. This problem is done. The digit in the ones place is the sum of the digits in a dozen. A dozen is 12. The sum of the digits is one plus three. In the ones place, my answer is a three. This one's done. This is how you solve these kids. We always get intimidated in class when we have a place value page like this because you see all the words and you automatically raise your hand because you don't want to try. Just please take your time on each one. The digit in the millions place is one tenth of 70. Well, if I were to take 70 and divide it by 10, I would get seven. The millions place is a seven. That one's done. The digit in the hundred thousands place, that's right here, is half the digit in the thousands place. That's right here. Half of six is three. This problem's done. The digit in the hundreds place, which is right here, 
is the sum of the digit in the thousands place and the digit in the ones place. My thousands place and my ones place is a nine. Six plus three is nine, so in the hundreds place, I have a nine. That one's done. The rest of the digits are all fives. So the rest in with fives. That's how you do these problems, kids. We got another one here. Thought this would be some good practice. The digit in the tens place is a two. Oops, better not cross off the wrong one. The digit in the ones place is double the digit in the tens place. Two plus two is four. The digit in the hundreds place is three times the digit in the tens place. So the digit in the tens place, three times that would be two times three is six. The digit in the hundred thousands place, that's right here, is an odd number less than three. Well, what numbers are less than three? We have two and we have one. Two is an even number, so that means we have one as our answer. The digit in the millions place is one third of 15. Millions place is right here. One third of 15 means 15 divided by three and we get five. The rest of the digits are all nines. Check your work, see how you did. Last one. Take a close look at this one here. We've got a decimal right here. Okay, keep in mind with that problem. The digit in the 10,000s place is the sum of the digits in of 150. So 10 thousands is right here. 1 plus 5 plus 0 equals 6. The 6 is right here in the 10 thousands place. The digit in the millions place is a prime number greater than 5. Millions place is right here. Prime number greater than 5, so the numbers greater than 5 are 6. I know 6 isn't prime because 2 times 3 is 6. 7 is a prime number. Because 1 times 7 is the only way to get to 7. The digit in the hundreds place is half the digit in the thousands place. So the digit in the hundreds place right here is half the digit in the thousands place. Do we know the number in the thousands place? We don't, so we have to skip this one. The digit in the tenths place is one less than the digit in the millions place. Tenths place is right here. One less than the millions place is right here, which means I have a 6 here. The digit in the thousands place is two-fifths of 20. Two-fifths of 20. Well, one-fifth of 20 would be four, so two-fifths would be eight. So in the thousands place, we have an eight. Now we know the number in the thousands place. The digit in the hundreds place, so right here, is half the digit in the thousands place, so half of eight is four. The rest of the digits are threes. See how I took my time on that? The reason why I wanted to do a couple of these kids is so when you kind of watch how I, how I problem solve in my mind and, and show my work, you take one step at a time. Well, what would have happened, a lot of times what I see during the day when you're working on your assignment is when you get to this problem right here, the digit in the hundreds place, all of a sudden you raise your hand automatically because you're like, Mr. Green, there is nothing in the thousands place. You're correct. That's why you have to keep on working, and then you might have to work your way back. Hopefully this helped. Um, look forward to working with you in class tomorrow, okay? So just take your time when you're dealing with place value and, of course, division.